I just completed a regen on my 2024 Silverado 1500 LZ Zero. Now this is going to apply to all of the 3.0 Duramax diesels, but what I'm gonna show you is exactly what a regen is, what happens on your dash, and then I'm also gonna talk about what kind of issues that may arise and how to correct these issues if you're not able to complete a regen. Now, you don't have to have a gauge setup like I have here, but this is the Bank Stealth Pod dual gauge setup. You can get a single as well, but this is a data monster, so this will record if I wanted it to. This is a super gauge, and that one will just read the display as shown here. Now, what I have set up here is this is EGT 1, 2, and 3. We're going to get to see the temperatures in the exhaust system as it completes a regen. This is a super cool little feature that you're really going to enjoy this. Now, regen percent is going to, it's obviously at 2% right now, but it's going to hit 100%. And then regen is going to activate on there. And we're going to get to watch these temperatures climb. And you're going to get to see the whole process of what is really happening. Now, if you don't have these gauges, there are a couple ways to see that you have you are in regen now let me just throw this out there that you don't have to do any of this by any means if you bought one of these trucks and you're one of those kind of people that just want to enjoy the truck and just drive it by all means do it but uh let me point out a couple things where maybe you go oh hey i am in regen i didn't realize that i was that's going to be some things that uh, will help you extend the life of this because these exhaust systems will not last forever and if you can do a complete regen in one full swoop, you're gonna lessen the amount of ash left behind in the exhaust. Now, if all of that is new to you and you wanna learn more, I've got you, okay? So let's just go ahead and get this going. There it is, we just hit 100%, so that is my warning on there. Now, regen is still off because everything needs to come up to temperature and it needs to actual, actually activate the regen. Now that warning popped off because I have it set in the background to let me know whenever I hit 100% on there. Currently we're looking at RPM is at 900 RPMs. We are still trying to warm up the vehicle as engine coolant temperature is only at 130 right now. Just noting the uh, EGT 1, 2, and 3 temperatures. You can see number 3 is still at 250, so we that will climb whenever regen starts to initiate. Here we go, we are officially activated on our regen. Now you can watch the temperatures climb on EGT 1, 2, and 3. And that's basically getting everything prepared for the regen process of burning everything off. Now, what's gonna happen is all the particulates that are in the filter, you know, I need to change something right there. Please forgive me. All right, I just did sit load. Right there so we can watch that as well now dpf soot load is at 101 percent sorry i didn't have that up there before that is a new feature that was just added and i'm not used to having it now you can see we're active you can see those temperatures climbing egt one two and three and what's happening is right now the cylinders are firing fuel into these the cylinder and the exhaust stroke and it's shooting it into the exhaust which is making these temperatures climb up because the burn is happening in the exhaust right now so that's going to climb up to roughly a thousand degrees and then it's going to be fully burning everything off and that is why it's critical to be above 30 miles per hour because you'll watch these temperatures we're now going to be coming to an idle the regen process cannot do anything at idle now the the idle is audibly louder rpm is the same 900 you can see our temperatures are not out of control by any means. Acceleration was a little bit more clackety. So if you didn't have these gauges, this, this is what you're going to notice is that it was just a little bit louder at idle and driving. You're gonna see the fuel mileage is going to drop down. And again, that's because we're dumping fuel in the exhaust stroke. Now, there we go, EGT2 is at 1,084. And now we need EGT3 to continue to grow, go up and we're above 30 miles per hour right now. So it will continue to go up. I changed my fuel mileage over here to 25 so we can see somewhat instantaneous fuel mileage. And you can see it is a little bit lower. I'm lightly on throttle right now. EGT3 temperature is up to 930. And we are officially in the regen burn process right now. Driving wise right now, I 
basically without these gauges, I would have no idea that I was even in regen. Now, if you're sitting idling, you're gonna smell some uh, exhaust, uh, not exhaust fumes, but you're gonna smell that the exhaust is hot. And obviously you can see why you're gonna smell that the exhaust is hot. Now you can see my soot load right there, percentage is dropping. And we'll see how low that goes before it deactivates the uh, regen process. Now, as you can see, I'm sitting in traffic during this regen. That's not a problem because while you're idling right here, it's still trying to maintain these temperatures within the exhaust. You're just not really burning anything off. So it's totally fine to be in, uh, in traffic during this but if you're in traffic throughout the whole thing it will time out after probably 90 minutes i believe is the the threshold on there and that's where you may get the indicator on your dash and all, what you need to do is just get a uh, active stretch of driving where you're above 30 miles per hour and i will get that here in a little while that's why i'm not worried about this at all we'll also see what acceleration is like while we're in regen i don't think it's very noticeable it, like i said it's just that the engine is a little bit more clackety and you can see my fuel mileage 10 11 right now because it's just dumping the fuel in the exhaust stroke like i explained so what we're doing i'm going to not accelerate that was not me that was the dodge ram next to me So engine sound wise, acceleration right there, I really can't tell that it's in regen other than my flashing display here. So what I'm trying to point out is that if you're just a typical owner that has one of these and you really don't care to worry about anything, then this is perfect. You don't need to worry about anything. The only thing you need to worry about is if it pops up on the dash and that's what I explained earlier was that you just need to drive above 30 miles an hour just find a stretch of road if that dash if that display shows up as an in, as a warning indicator that's it so what i need to do now is get over so i can get some uh, just maintained speed throttle response is unchanged i don't feel uh, i don't feel anything different really All right, here we are just cruising right now at 40 miles an hour, 40 plus. This is optimal in my opinion, because you're just lightly cruising. You're not gonna totally kill your fuel mileage. You can see I'm in the 13s. Um, just moderate throttle, cruising right along. It's in the regen. Soot load is down to 72%. You really just can't beat that. You can see everything that's going on. Those temperatures, everything's looking good on my exhaust side. EGT-1 is right after the turbocharger, so you're really not going to get too much heat there. It's where the particulate filters are at, and that's where 2 and 3 EGT is located. Now we've got some major stoppage right here, and we're going to go ahead and ruin this uh, good run that we had going. Now again, stop and go, no big deal. It's trying to maintain the temperatures in the exhaust. It knows that we're not cruising above 30 miles an hour. Now, if I was going to the grocery store or whatever, and I wanted to go into the parking lot and just shut it off, you absolutely can. The system is designed for that. I recommend that you do not do that uh, if you're able to avoid it, just because of the soot mass that gets in there. Well, the soot that loads up in there. Um, excuse me, not soot, but the ash. So. The particulate filter is just that. It collects all the particulates and then it goes through a burning process like we're watching right here. And once the burning process is done, all that soot turns into ash. Now it's much less than what the initial soot load was. However, the ash stays behind because you cannot get the ash out. And that will basically load up the, the particulate filter. And over time, if you do enough of these, then it's just not gonna be able to complete the regen you're going to need to replace the exhaust now right now just cruising like this i can smell the exhaust my windows are up my ac is on recirculate i shouldn't have any outside smells 
I can smell heat. It smells hot. But other than that, there's no fumey smell. There's no, no disgusting smells. It's just, I can smell hot, if that makes any sense. And once again, we are moving above 30 miles an hour. You can see soot load is dropping. We're already at 62%. This is gonna be a quick regen, which makes sense because the truck only has a thousand miles on it. Cruising at 43 miles an hour, getting 19, 20 miles per gallon. We are going slightly downhill, so that is helping. I'm just lightly on the throttle. I'm gonna go ahead and get over though. Again, no change in the feel. The turbo comes on as you request it with a little bit more throttle pedal. The only the only indicator that I would have right now if I didn't have these gauges was this cluster right here where my fuel mileage went to complete crap and the smell. The DPF will clean itself as part of a normal operation. Several factors including fuel consumed, hours of oper engine operation, and miles driven are monitored by the ECM. The self-cleaning occurs approximately once per fuel tank. Now I've noticed that in my use as well and every once in a while I'll see that I have two regens in a tank but roughly every 350 to 450 miles is where I see a regen come in. Now under certain conditions such as idling or very short trips the self-cleaning process has less efficiency and cannot be completed. To resolve this continue driving safely at a steady speed as close to the posted speed limit as possible preferably without stopping until the message turns off. This can take up to 30 minutes. Now if you're wondering what those messages are pretty much on the dash here you're going to get a message that pops up that may be clean exhaust filter see owner's manual now clean exhaust filter keep driving until message is cleared cleaning exhaust filter continue driving diesel particulate filter is full continue driving diesel particulate filter is full continue driving mandatory and if you continue driving at some point the engine power will be reduced and you will be required to take this in for a repair because there's something definitely wrong now, extended idling must be avoided while the message is displayed because the DPF system is not capable of self-cleaning at idle. The way to correct this is that you need to drive the vehicle above 30 miles per hour until the message goes off. And this could be anywhere from 20 to 50 miles. The exhaust particulate filter captures the diesel exhaust gas particles, preventing their release into the atmosphere. This is accomplished by forcing particulate laden exhaust through a filter substrate of porous cells, which removes the particulates from the exhaust gas. The exhaust gas en enters the filter, but because of every other cell of the filter is capped at the opposite end, the exhaust particulates cannot exit the cell. Instead, the exhaust gas passes through the porous walls of the cell, leaving the particulates trapped on the cell wall. The cleaned exhaust gas exits the filter through the adjacent cell. The exhaust particulate filter is capable of reducing more than 90% of particulate matter. There we go, it just ended right there. It is now off. And you can see regen percent is at 39% and soot load is at 39% as well. We're gonna see this number come down as it continues to calculate everything. It's also going to go into full cool down mode of the exhaust, which is why the road or the driving like this is so critically important in my opinion because it gives it a, a slow cool off rather than just an abrupt shutdown. Now you might be out wondering what the difference between DPF regen percent and DPF soot load percent is. Now my opinion on that is the DPF regen percent is all of the calculations of how many miles, how much fuel has been used, um, drive cycles, everything about it that's calculating everything within that whereas the soot load is actually just measuring the differential pressure between before and after and that's going to give it a measurement of how much soot load has accumulated within the dpfs as we can see the temperatures are still gradually dropping down as is the soot load percent and the regen percent now that we're warmed up, you can see RPM is sitting at 700 RPM, which is typical, nice and quiet. 900 RPM is regen as well as heating up the engine. There we are, we got the magical DPF soot level at 0%, DPF regen at 1%. I'd love to see that at 0%, but 
but you know, we got it close enough.